In this video, we are continuing our discussion of the lymphatic system by talking about the lymphoid organs. If you haven't watched it already, please go back and study the first lymphatic system video on lymphatic drainage. The lymphoid organs bring immune cells together, enabling them to kick off an adaptive, specific immune response. The thymus is an exception to this. We'll talk a bit about what the thymus does towards the end of the video. You find a variety of cells in lymphoid organs. The immune cells include the phagocytes and the lymphocytes. The phagocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells ingest bacteria and viruses, break them down, and use fragments of these organisms to activate T lymphocytes. Dendritic cells in particular are very good at activating T lymphocytes. You have both kinds of lymphocytes in the lymphoid organs. B lymphocytes are the antibody-producing cells. T lymphocytes come in two flavors. One type of lymphocyte, the cytotoxic T cell, destroys virus-infected cells. The other type of T lymphocyte, the helper T cell, helps every other part of the immune system do its job. Helper T cells even help B cells become better antibody producers. Just another reason why it's so useful to have all of these immune cells in the same place. You also find non-immune cells in the lymphoid organs. Reticular cells produce and maintain the network of reticular fibers that all of the lymphoid cells attach to. This image is a scanning electron micrograph that shows how the reticular fibers form a framework for the lymphoid cells to sit on. Here are the reticular fibers, and here are some lymphocytes sitting on the reticular fibers, just waiting to attack any pathogens that come along. The first lymphoid organs I want to discuss are the lymph nodes. Remember that lymph nodes are part of the lymphatic drainage system. Lymphatic vessels bring lymph into the lymph nodes, the afferent lymphatics, and carry lymph back out of the lymph nodes through the efferent lymphatics. Lymph from any given tissue passes through several lymph nodes on its journey back to the blood. Once lymph is brought into the lymph node, it slows down and becomes temporarily trapped. This happens because there are more afferent lymphatics coming into the lymph node than there are efferent lymphatics coming out. More lymph flowing in than out means that lymph has to spend a bit of time in the node. The cortex of the lymph node is basically a collection of lymphoid follicles surrounded by a connective tissue capsule. The follicles are separated by bridges of connective tissue called trabeculae. Within each follicle, you have clustered immune cells, macrophages, dendritic cells, T cells, and B cells. These cells sample the lymph as it passes slowly through the cortex. If anything dangerous is in the lymph, these cells will begin an immune response here. Each follicle has a central germinal center where B cells that have become activated are rapidly proliferating and becoming antibody producers. Mature antibody producing B cells, called plasma cells, then move from the germinal center into the medulla of the lymph node. Plasma cells sit in the medulla, pumping out enormous quantities of antibodies that drain into the efferent lymphatics. In the medulla, you also find T cells and phagocytes that are on their way back out of the lymph node. This slide shows you what the lymph node looks like under the microscope. You have the outer connective tissue wrapping the capsule. Deep to the capsule, you have the cortex. 
The cortex is where you find the lymphoid follicles. Let me outline a few. Note the highly active germinal centers in some of the follicles. Tucked inside the cortex, although not completely surrounded by it, you have the medulla. Antibody-producing cells sit in the medulla. Lymph and T-cells and phagocytes on their way out of the lymph node pass through the medulla to the efferent lymphatics. The other lymphoid organs are not part of the lymphatic drainage, but they do provide locations for immune cells to come together. The tonsils, spleen, Peyer's patches, and appendix all contain lymphoid follicles that function like the lymphoid follicles of the lymph node. They contain phagocytes and lymphocytes brought together in one place so that they can work together to mount an immune response. As mentioned before, the thymus serves a different purpose. These aren't the only locations in the body where your immune system can initiate a response, just the major ones. There is diffuse lymphatic tissue, individual lymphoid follicles found in virtually every organ of the body. Your immune system can even form temporary lymphoid follicles in tissues that are actively infected. These temporary follicles disperse once the infection is cleared. The spleen basically does for the blood what your lymph nodes do for the lymph. The lymphoid follicles of the spleen are called the white pulp. Think white for white blood cells. The spleen is a dual-purpose organ. The white pulp mounts immune responses against pathogens in the blood but the white pulp is surrounded by red pulp, which traps old, damaged red blood cells. Macrophages in the red pulp phagocytose and digest these old red blood cells, so the red pulp can be thought of as a red blood cell graveyard. Think red for red blood cells. This slide shows you some of the histology of the spleen. You can see the lymphoid follicles, the white pulp, like islands in the middle of a sea of red pulp. You can also see the paler germinal centers of the white pulp. Your tonsils contain clusters of lymphoid follicles protecting the mucosal surface of your pharynx, your throat. Your tonsils surround your pharynx in a ring located to catch pathogens that enter your throat in food, water, or air. The tonsils have deep pockets called tonsillar crypts that trap particles entering into your pharynx, including bacteria. The lymphoid follicles sit just under the mucosa, around the crypts, ready to sample and attack any pathogens that get stuck in the tonsillar crypts. Sometimes bacteria that get stuck in the crypts manage to hide out from the immune system. They stay deep in the tonsillar crypts and proliferate, periodically releasing bacteria that infect the throat. When a patient has recurring throat infections, seven or more in a year, their doctor may perform a tonsillectomy, surgical removal of the tonsils removing this source of infection. The Peyer's patches are clusters of lymphoid follicles located in the wall of the small intestine, specifically in the distal region of the small intestine, the ileum. These lymphoid follicles mount an immune response to bacteria or viruses in your food. The epithelium above the Peyer's patches contains specialized cells that bring in samples of the digested food passing through the intestine and deliver these samples to the immune cells of the Peyer's patches. At last we get to the thymus. I want to be very clear about one thing. The thymus does not initiate an immune response. Instead, the thymus acts like a university or finishing school for T lymphocytes. 
In fact, the T in T lymphocytes stands for thymus. The thymus also has a different structure from the other lymphoid organs. Remember that the other lymphoid organs contain an extensive network of reticular fibers. In the thymus, it's a network of epithelial cells that serves as the framework for T lymphocytes to gather on. The thymus changes with age. In the fetus and childhood, the thymus is large and very active. Beginning at puberty, the thymus begins a process of involution, or regression. It starts to shrink, and much of the active tissue of the thymus is replaced by adipose tissue. By old age, the thymus is all adipose and fibrous connective tissue. Thymic involution, the loss of thymus function, is part of the reason our immune system becomes less effective in old age. This slide shows you the appearance of a young, still active thymus. The thymus is made up of a series of segments called lobules. Each lobule has an outer cortex and an inner medulla. These two regions work together to select for functioning, self-tolerant T cells. Roughly, the cortex selects four T cells that can respond to antigen, and the medulla selects against T cells that respond to self-antigen. So, the cortex makes sure that your T cells can work, and the medulla makes sure your T cells don't attack your own body. This is what I mean by saying that the T cells get educated in the thymus. After reviewing this video and studying the lymphoid organs, you should be able to answer these questions. Why not give it a try now?